Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Don't mind Jackson. He's in my left right now. He's in my left right now. Yes, he is. Big head, little arms. Sorry, I'll put you down. So today's video is going to be about how I heat my new leopard gecko enclosures. Now, I actually posted two videos about them already. One is about an actual tour of the enclosures and the other one is just me showing off the different items I use for decor in the enclosure. This one is going to be about how I heat them. So this video isn't going to be super long and I'm going to include links below that'll help explain this process more because there are things I watched that were helpful to me when I first started to learn how to use some of the different heating elements I explained in this video. This is probably the most important part of keeping the leopard geckos because they have to have a heat source and so I feel like it's probably the most important topic to talk about and therefore deserved its own video. First I want to say if you were interested in checking out the other videos about these enclosures I will include a playlist down below that way you can check them out and and familiarize yourself with the enclosures that I'm actually going to be discussing. So I kept the previous method of heating my enclosures, which were my leopard gecko bookshelves. I'll include a video about them up here, but I used THG heat tape in those enclosures and I also used THG heat tape in these as well. So in the leopard gecko enclosures, they had a floor space that was 12 inches deep. These enclosures have a floor space that is 18 inches deep. So to fit with the one third of floor space rule, the previous enclosures had four inch heat tape and these enclosures have six inch heat tape. That's the only difference between the heat tape that I chose. I'm going to include a picture right here on the screen of how I laid the heat tape out on the bottom stand. This is how I did it for all of the enclosures. So it starts with the end of the connection on one end and then I laid it straight across the top of the stand which is where the bottom of the first enclosure would be. From then on, I weaved the heat tape throughout each enclosure. So I'm gonna include a picture on the screen of the siding of my enclosures, and that is how you can see that they have been weaved. Now I only did this up to 12 feet. So as soon as I hit 12 feet, I cut off the connection and started a new run of heat tape. We'll talk about that more in a minute. So once you have that run complete, you're gonna wanna tape off the ends of your heat tape. And again, this is something I'm going to include in the links below about how to actually use heat tape, but just something to make sure that you do. Whenever you cut or sever a, a heat tape line, like you're done, you have to wrap the two ends in electrical tape. So I ended my heat tape after three enclosures, and then I started the heat tape for the next three enclosures by doing the exact same method. I just laid the next line of heat tape on top of one of the top of the enclosures that would support the next enclosure up, as in like the bottom of the next enclosure. And then I weaved it throughout the enclosures until I got to the second to last one. I just put the heat tape run on the top of that one and then ended the connection and then put the last enclosure on top. So the last enclosure has heating from the tape laying on top of the previous one. They all have that. So the heat tape starts on the top of the stand and then it just goes doo dee dee, 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 and weaves all the way up. I use this method in the gecko bookshelves. I also now use it with these enclosures. However, it's external. So you can see the heat tape on the outside like I showed in pictures, um, just for like a, a brief bit as it weaves into the next line of enclosure. This THG heat tape is something that I've used for a long time, so I feel safe using it. I get mine from Pangea. I also get my connecting cables from Pangea. Recently, Pangea did not have my six inch THG heat tape that I needed, so I actually got it from the bean farm, but because I'm familiar with the connecting cables on Pangea, I got those there. So connecting the heat tape is not something I'm gonna show in this video. That is something that you should watch on your own, and I will include links below for that. I have connected heat tape many times now because of the gecko bookshelves, so this was like really swift and easy for me and didn't cause any problems or frustration at all and it's all running beautifully. So once you have it set up, you're going to want to make sure you place your probe and you hook up your thermostat. So this is my first time ever using Herbstat thermostats. I got four Herbstat 2s, so the Herbstat 2 allows for two probe outlets, so I have on the entire six enclosures over here and the six enclosures against this wall that you can't see have a Herbstat 2 for each one. So one probe controls three enclosures and probe controls the other three enclosures if that makes sense. And the Herbstat 2 
again, like I said, comes with two probes. And so that's why it's called Herbstat 2. If you want to have four probes, you get a Herbstat 4. There was a little bit of trial and error in the beginning of trying to figure out how the Herbstats work because they're quite a bit nicer than the thermostats I've had before. Um, but once it was settled, like it's super easy and I really like them. So I have two Herbstats on this wall of enclosures as well. And so there's four total probe connections on here. I'm using three of them because I run 12 feet of tape on one probe at a time. And you can run up to 20, but I wouldn't recommend running as much as 20 because you always wanna shoot for below what the maximum is for something. So I have 12 feet on one probe for each of the uh, enclosures set up around the room. So three enclosures for the tall ones are on one probe, three, again, one probe. And then for the big wall of enclosures, I have the bottom two rows on one probe, the middle two rows on one probe, and then the top two rows on another probe. Because there is no Herbstat 3, I just ordered two Herbstat 2s. When you place the probe, you want to place it on top of the heat tape outside of the enclosure. So these enclosures don't really allow for you to place probes internally anyway, because they only have like acrylic doors and then their ventilation little like, you can kind of see the little slits for ventilation up here. But the safest way to use a thermostat probe is to place it right on top of the heat tape or whatever type of heat source you're using outside of the enclosure and then adjust your thermostat until you reach proper temperature inside the enclosure. So like, for example, if you want a basking spot of 90 inside your enclosure, you might have to set your thermostat to like 92 or something so that it reaches enough underneath to create a 90 in your enclosure. It is the safest way when you like are researching how to use heat tape and different under tank heating methods. The safest way is to put it on the outside of the enclosure and to put the probe on the outside of the enclosure rather than placing the probe on the inside of the enclosure and the heat tape on the outside that's just what they recommend so that's what i do because if they recommend it they they know what they're doing i'm gonna follow the instructions one thing i want to make sure that you're aware of is that when you get a thermostat it has a maximum output for wattage or like how much it can actually control so make sure that you are checking for your individual thermostat and not putting too many watts from your heat tape or whatever heat source that you have into that thermostat a lot of times they have like a really big number that they can allow for so you're fine but just make sure for heat tape you can measure the amount of watts that they put out by taking the watts per foot and then multiplying that by the amount of feet that you have so the four inch heat tape the six inch heat tape 11 inch heat tape because they gradually get bigger they have different watts per foot so make sure that when you're buying your heat tape make sure you calculate um, by multiplying watts per foot by the amount of feet that you are going to need and then check your thermostat and make sure that that actually works for your thermostat. Now I want to talk about why I have the heat tape laying this way instead of having it situated on one third of the enclosure this way. If you notice before these enclosures, in my leopard gecko bookshelves, I also had the heat tape running like this. I first did that because it was the only way I could run the heat tape without having to like have a million different little heat pads and thermostats. But I actually realized it is a better way of using the heating elements for under tank heating than just having one under tank heater and then nothing and nothing like as your one third floor space. So the one third floor space rule is when you're using an under tank heater, you want to make sure that it doesn't cover more than one third of the floor space. That way your reptile can thermoregulate by moving off of it and moving onto it. Something that people have noticed with leopard geckos is that they'll have a tendency to just stay on their hot hide or just stay on their cool hide and they won't travel back and forth as much or be as active because they're always seeking out the warmth or always off the warmth. Maybe it might be too warm or something. So I know that leopard gecko talk has the DP projectors and she has talked about how that she has seen more activity in her leopard geckos because it's not just heat in one spot it heats up multiple spots in the enclosure at different temperatures and so then they move around more to thermoregulate it's actually something that i noticed with running the heat tape this way for one third of the enclosure instead of just having it one third 
and then nothing. So I have the six inches of heat tape on the back third of the enclosure and then the front two thirds of the enclosure. Remember it is 18 inches, six times three is 18. So six inches would be one third of the floor space being heated and then 12 of unheated floor space, if that makes sense to you. So the front 12 inches don't have any heat whatsoever. And then the back six inches of the entire enclosure lengthwise does have heat tape. So I have noticed ever since using this method with the gecko bookshelves and now with these enclosures that because of this, the geckos move around a lot more because it creates a better ambient temperature because the heat is being distributed this way instead of just heat over here. And then this side's gonna be really cold. The heat is better distributed this way and it creates a better ambient. But I've also noticed that with these enclosures, having heat tape along the bottom but also the it's along the top as well because it's heating the next enclosure because it's stacked some of that heat comes down into the enclosure as well and it creates really nice ambient temperatures and i've noticed that my leopard geckos are sleeping on top of their cork they are sleeping like all around the enclosure instead of being underneath of something they're sleeping out in the middle of the enclosure which they did in their gecko bookshelves but i've noticed now they're sleeping on top of things so the standard recommendation of course is the you have one two spaces without heat and then this space has heat for your one third floor space i really recommend doing it this way instead because i've seen better results with my leopard gecko's behavior they'll be splooting right in the middle on their on their cool side because the ambient temps are still warm enough that they're not like too cold that they have to constantly be on their heat mat when they want to be with their heat they can lay under it or they can lay above now and get the heat from above as well it's just worked out really well without me even really thinking about it and that's kind of how it worked with the gecko bookshelves as well because i had originally just went like this with the heat tape because i needed to but it ended up really working out in my favor because it uh, altered the behavior in a positive way and i'm still seeing that in these enclosures and even to a greater effect now that they're having a little bit of heat from above as well so you might worry that they're having too much heat but again i'm measuring their ambient temperatures with a thermometer and i also have the infrared thermometer so their their temperatures are constantly measured and they are all on thermostat so there's no worry of overheating especially since they have the front 12 inches without heat in the enclosure but it's just really cool to see them like sleeping out and about during the day like they'll full on be splooting on top of their cork like in the middle of the day and it's really great to see that i think that's all i have to say about how i heat my leopard gecko enclosures if you have any questions please don't hesitate to leave them down below thank you for watching please leave a like hit the subscription bell hit the please subscribe hit the notification bell all the good stuff and i'll see you guys in the next one bye